observer pattern arises in programming when we want to respond to the changing state of an object. When an object changes, it will notify its observers, that is, other objects who have told the object that they want to be notified of updates, so that they can execute some other code on their side. In this way, we dynamically respond to new events that occur within an object. One example of this behavior, from within the computer science domain, is the very well-known model view controller paradigm. This term refers to software in which the components used to display the user interface, or view, are logically separated from those that drive the logic. The observer pattern is used when things in the underlying model change in order to have the view display the most recent data available. Now, do you get what an observer pattern is about and where we need to use it? I think so. Good. Let's take a look at the individual parts now. Okay. There are three major parts to the observer pattern. The first is the subject undergoing observation. It will contain methods to add and remove subscribers, which is called registering and unregistering. When it changes, it will notify the observers with the notify all method. Of course, it goes without saying that we will need some data structure to hold references to the observers. The observer is the interface that specifies the behavior of observers in the pattern. Typically, the only method needed in this interface is notify. This can be either an interface that concrete observers will implement, or it can be an abstract class that concrete observers can extend. Concrete observers are classes which implement the observer interface and contain the logic that will be executed when the subject changes state. The notify all method that we previously mentioned will call the notify methods that can be found in these classes. Here's a quick question. Let's say that we have some code that implements the observer pattern. Is it necessary that every concrete observer watch for the same kinds of changes in the subject? Well, as it turns out, that isn't necessary. Ordinarily, we have the subject notify the observers of any change at all in their state. And we have the observers see if they want to take any action. The pattern works like so. Initially, concrete observers that implement the observer interface will register themselves with the subject through the register observer method. When the subject changes state in some way that might interest potential observers, it will notify them via the notify observers method. This will call the notify methods of any potential observers. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and Michael, if you're out there. I've got an example for you. I'm writing a program that uses the observer pattern and I need your help. I've got a simple program here that keeps track of how many times the K key on the keyboard is pressed. And it displays it in text in the GUI. And those are the two concrete observer classes. Yep, they are. I'm pretty sure that the code is working all right, but it's not compiling. Can you help me out? Here's the first class. It's the subject class, which I will call the logic class. I've got the methods for registering and unregistering concrete observers. And I've got the notify all method that I can call in the main method. As you can see, the notify all method is calling the notify methods in all of the registered observers. And here are the two concrete observers, the GUI view and text view classes. And you see that they both implement the notify methods. Here's the observer interface which I call program view, which both of my concrete observers implement so that I can treat them both the same way. So what's the matter? If you need to, go to the website on the screen and download the code for example too. Please pause this video until you think you have an answer and you've filled out the questionnaire. All right, here's the answer. I forgot to put a specification of the notify method in the interface that my view classes implement. Because I'm going to treat all of those observer classes like interface objects, I can only call the method specified in the interface itself. It all seems pretty obvious now, polymorphism. 
I recommend playing with the code and getting to understand it before proceeding to the final part of the program. And now for the part that all of you have no doubt been waiting for. The halfway mark. No, just kidding. There is an exercise associated with this module. You're going to be given code that contains a main method with a for loop that will increment with each pass around the loop. At five passes, a certain method will be called. At ten passes, another method is called. At twenty, a third method is called. All of these methods are within the same class. Your goal is to refactor the code to use the observer pattern that we have just discussed. The starting code for this project can be found at this website. Good luck! Here's one way you could have done it. First, creating an interface for the observer. Then, by creating methods that register and unregister observers in the main class. We use an array list to hold references to the observers. Next, a notify all method that would call all the observers notify methods would be a good thing to put in the code. And then creating concrete observers for the different methods, plus an observer interface, are the ingredients needing to be added. Each concrete observer would have a notify method that checked to see if it ought to execute upon being called. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you very much, and we'll see you around.